Robert. Uh, getting up in the middle of the night, we've got, yeah, the very lightest here. And I'm meteorologist Mike Prangley, of course, here in Tampa, St. Pete. And meteorologist Robert Spetta in Jacksonville and the St. Augustine area up into southeast Georgia. Good to have you, Robert. Always happy to be here with you, Mike. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to work with you, even though you're on the other side of the state now. Uh, you know, we're talking some tropics out here. Me and you in the studio have covered hurricanes in the uh, past. And, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. He, Let's get to we, it. We got another one to cover out here. Yeah. Cat so, five now. Yeah. So this is what we're doing here. We're going to update the information as it comes in. And earlier we broke the news here on our streaming show at 11 a.m. Uh, just about, I think, 1120 to be exact when it actually Aaron became a cat five hurricane. And now here at the two o'clock update, uh, the new numbers are in. It looks like it's holding more steady. It was just explosively intensifying earlier, but still at 160 mile per hour winds moving west at 16. Pressure at 915 millibars, uh, 110 miles north of Anguilla. And as we take a look and head over to the wall here, uh, we're taking a look at the best news of all. It's a monster storm that is missing uh, the islands. No direct hits expected for Puerto Rico and areas of the windward leeward islands here. In fact, up about 100 miles to the north. And if what's happening in the, the islands, if anything, is the smaller size of this. You've got the hurricane force winds about 35 miles or so from the center, a tropical storm force winds of about 140 mile per hour out. But what has made this system strong is this pinhole eye here uh, that has really allowed it to wind up here. It's like a speed skater bringing in the arms in and we've got the angular momentum, the conservation taking place in the atmosphere and that air is actually really responding to yes, the incredible rising updrafts of the storm and it's trying to fill and that wind's just speeding up around that eye. So as we look at the latest data here is of two o'clock. Yes, yeah, still moving west at 16 and as Robert and I have been talking about until we see that turn, we never say never, but everything is still in very good agreement that it will. But I'll feel better once we see that west wind uh, turn, and then we'll see it more to the north and eventually uh, north northeast as we head into next week. But notice a, a just a powerful uh, hurricane as it moves and skirts just to the east and north of the Bahamas here. Even as we go into Tuesday, I wouldn't be surprised to see this hold together as a Category 5 into early next week, a little longer than you see here. You can see uh, Hurricane Center bringing it to about 155 mile per hour winds by 8 o'clock. Sunday, 140 by Tuesday, and I'm going to give you time to think about this. We usually like to include a little trivia question. Aaron is the first Cat 5 hurricane in August since it's been a while. All right, first Cat 5 and hurricane since. Uh, yeah, I'll let you think about it. But what we've been watching here is this rapid intensification. OK, so notice 24 hours ago, 75 mile per hour winds up to 160 now. So we more than doubled the criteria needed. Usually it's 35 miles per hour in 24 hours. So it's that unbelievably warm water running two to four degrees above average, lower wind shear. It's out of the Saharan dust and look at the pressure down to 915 millibars. That's a sign of the intensity of the storm. 993 yesterday. Notice we've gone from a category one to a category five. So Robert, scientifically, yeah, I think this is going to be one for the books for sure. Uh, what are your thoughts? Just just an amazing uh, thing to look at this morning as we woke up, got out of bed in the middle of the night and you and I were both just just mesmerized as this thing just got stronger and stronger and you saw that little pinhole eye there, right? right? <clears throat> I mean, I um I went to bed around nine o'clock last night and it was it was not quite a major hurricane. It was expected to become one. Mm -hmm. And it, it just over the course of about eight hours, the bottom dropped out on this thing. And you're right, just a little bit of surprise because we all expect it to become a major, but sometime this weekend, but it just tightened up really mm -hmm. quick. And that rapid Ooh. intensification, dare I say, explosive intensification, I mean, yes. double of what the technical um, definition as of it and just look at the satellite picture this is impressive it is and I, and I say impressive in the sense and please don't take my words out of context for all of our viewers and I understand most people watching this understand um, I, I no one's happy about a cat five out there all right we are happy that it is not directly in the inner core is not directing any in, uh, land areas but you know looking at this this is a classic text mm -hmm book buzz saw shape good outflow aloft uh inner core the eye wall is being picked up on radar out of the leeward islands where they have tropical storm warnings in place right now uh -huh. um 
it, it is definitely, or excuse me, Tropical Storm watches, I should say, in place right now. Uh, it is definitely your your classic textbook Cat 5 Storm. And from the last update, I mean, this the wind speed stayed the same, but it did go down 2 millibars, the 915. And I saw a Hurricane Hunter pass here not that long ago. Mm -hmm. I got to double check it. I think it got down even lower than that out here mike so we're yeah, seeing that look. the the pressure is still dropping it is still strengthening we're not going through an eye wall replacement cycle right now um when that happens you might see a little bit of weakening but you'll, you'll start to see that if we see two kind of eye walls begin to form up in that center of storm but from a objective meteorological standpoint this is definitely a very powerful and impressive storm system and you got to thank your lucky stars that it's not rolling directly over any of these uh these islands out here today mike oh my goodness for sure in fact i'm looking at some of the latest graphics here and a lot of folks are uh you were talking about some of the islands there and as we take a look here uh we officially have i, I found one place you know the u.s british virgin islands U, u.s virgin islands right now don't have any official warnings but uh, the british virgin islands do at a little island called Settlement. So you see that little blue area. So there's our tropical storm warning. Otherwise, uh, really feeling very blessed uh, to be in the islands because, again, keeping those highest winds to the north. And it's a very compact system. So, again, I know a lot of folks have family, friends in Puerto Rico and San Juan. Uh, back into the U.S., British, and Virgin Islands here. I, it, we're talking about some good news, at least for the islands, but bad news is there will be some possible flash flooding and some very heavy rain heading their way. As we look at the overall setup, uh, confidence that this will recurve as we head into next week. That, that turn won't happen officially until Monday. In fact, as uh, we take a look here, uh, we're talking about a lower wind shear that allowed this thing to become really a monster. And then as we take a look, it also outran all that Saharan dust uh, that was really kind of keeping it at bay there and you can see uh, the big shield of dust staying off to its east as it does that recurve and you can see the latest UCMET models uh, may be trending a little farther north uh, before it turns a little bit farther to the east but the models have been in very good agreement and we were talking about this earlier Robert that uh, that that cone history has been very good and uh, you, you can't get much better than this scientifically the big thing that uh, of course we're going to be working on is this rapid intensification. I mean, we're seeing storms that are just ramping up like never before, and, and none of the models I could find had it uh, increasing 85 miles per hour over 24 hours. So uh, again, lucky we don't have any direct impacts expected in the island nations, and in, that includes uh, Bermuda as it splits between Bermuda and the United States. And, and then as it heads off to the north, we'll watch maybe for a strong post-tropical cyclone, maybe by the time it gets to Iceland. But uh, overall, as we look at the models, uh, feeling very lucky here uh, for our folks in the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. You see the forecast storm winds here. Uh, again, talking about that compactness of the system. But as this continues to roll off to the west and turn, make that turn more to the west, northwest, and the north next week, again, uh, we're keeping even the highest wind gusts away from the islands of, of the Bahamas, okay, the Turks and Caicos. And the big thing we're watching now for the east coast would be you guessed it. Yeah, the rip currents, the deadly rip currents. And we got to watch that wind flow very carefully. In fact, you can see the latest wave heights. I've been pushing these up and it does look like we're already starting to see a ground swell reaching the Florida coast as early as this afternoon along that east coast of Florida. And then watch the waves here. We got two to three foot sets coming in uh, Monday afternoon and these these uh, models continue just to increase it. OK, so we got uh, five to eight, seven to eight foot uh, surf as you head from St. Simons, Jekyll Island, all the way back down to St. St. Augustine and even up to, toward the areas of Cape Canaveral, maybe some nine, 10 foot sets. And then, of course, up toward Cape Hatteras, uh, some large larger wave and swells there. So, uh, Robert, the big story uh, for the east coast of Florida will be big impacts. In fact, uh, I, you issued that weather impact alert next week, of course, uh, for the dangerous seas, surf, and those deadly rip currents, right? Yeah, you know, the rip currents being the big one. And my worry is that we actually backed off the rainfall chances here into the Jacksonville area. And same thing over towards Tampa and really most of the state of Florida. You're not today. We are getting storms, by the way. We have some pretty strong storms setting up all across the first coast. But 
the rainfall chances are going to come down as this gets closer. Mm -hmm. And the reason is for that a little bit of um, downward movement on the outside of the storm subsidence is what we call it. But the thing is, even though the weather might seem nice, you're going to have some powerful waves out there. You're going to have that onshore flow. And you can see the wind flow on Sunday and the Monday. See those wind kind of streamlines coming in from the northeast? Mm -hmm. It is over a wide area there. And all of that is going to start to push the water up on shore. So with that, you're going to cause a, a pretty decent rip current, a pretty decent littoral current. You're also going to be having um, some beach erosion at high tides. Next week, we are approaching a new moon. So we've got that spring tide starting to build in. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bit of minor beach erosion and minor, minor tidal flooding. Am I expecting Irma type flooding? No. A absolutely not no one is saying that but if you are in some of these tidal plains that flood during like king tides for example you're probably going to be looking at some impacts there that is kind of the big thing but i think the number one thing and, and it is rip currents are I, it always feels like second nature because most people don't get into the water but mm -hmm. it is um it's one of the deadliest weather phenomena, believe it or not, in the state of Florida, is rip currents. It, it, at time and time and time, people drown, mm -hmm. and it's just, especially on days like Monday, Tuesday, where it is not going to be raining out there, but you're still going to be looking at those dangerous rips. So make sure you're definitely being aware there. You know where to spot it. If you swim near a lifeguard, they'll tell you where to spot it if you can't see it from the ground just like this. And you know what the other issue is? A lot of times, rip currents, it's actually where the water is kind of flat from your point of view. And if you don't know what you're looking at, you might think it's calm, but it's actually because that flow is pushing out and knocking those waves down and it looks kind of calm out there. So I think on the first coast, the rips are going to be the big issue, the chance of beach erosion. Mike, so yes. Aaron is the first Cat 5 hurricane in August since, since what? Please tell me. Okay. It may have flashed on the screen. You know, I was I was getting it ready, buddy. And it, we take a look at since 2009, uh, it was Hurricane Dean. So it's been oh. a long time. Time uh, since we've seen that, isn't that amazing? I, I can't believe it's been so long. Actually, how about you? I'm I'm actually a little bit flabbergasted. <laughs> yeah. um, I I will admit I didn't know that, but because uh -huh. we Barrow was in June, I guess Milton last year and Helene. But he'll these, make cat five. But yeah, those August. were in September and November. Yeah. So it's been a bit. It's because it's August. Yeah, big difference. So as we look at the big three, I put together more stats. You know, you and I love our stats here. So let's look at the big oh, three. Yeah. So earliest cat five, not in the Gulf and the Caribbean on record. So yeah, this what? we said this morning that this would be a historical storm. And it's certainly living up to that. So I've got the earliest Cat 5 not located in the Gulf and Caribbean. OK, so August 16th that's before August 17th. And it has a lower pressure. So I go over to the weather wall uh, since Hurricane Andrew in 1992. So as meteorologists, when we're measuring the intensity of the storm, we look at that pressure and it's been falling and falling. You know, the air needs to replace uh, that air somehow toward the center of the storm and it creates this vacuum effect. So it's really telling us about the power and the energy of the storm. And you can see uh, Andrew 922 and I believe we're down to 915 millibars and definitely the lowest pressure and most intense storm since Milton. Uh, last year and here in Tampa, we're still not over Milton and we're still recovering. And of course, we're talking about deadly rip currents uh, of six to 10 feet surf. OK, and this is for northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. So be extra careful. Uh, it's really best to stay out of the water in this type of situation. Even the best surfers, most experienced swimmers will not be able to deal with this uh, power in the motion and the ocean and the motion in the ocean. That's for sure. So big three again, uh, we've got the earliest cat five, not in the Gulf and the Caribbean, but the good news is we don't expect any direct landfalls. It's a cat five now could remain a category five because we've got the low wind shear and the warm water temperatures about four degrees above average. So this could hold together as at least a four close to a five all the way into early next week, and then it'll make that turn. And it can't make that turn soon enough. All right, so that would be during the day Monday and then we'll feel a little better once we see it turn to the north and then eventually off to the northeast. Uh, and then by then slowly we can even by late next week still a formidable hurricane at category two. So if you're just joining us, our two o'clock updates in. We've got Hurricane Aaron, a category five a historical storm with 160 mile per hour winds.